Hey, hello. I hope you are doing great. Today we are going to learn two fundamental concepts of programming. One is pure function and another is side effects. Both of these concepts are coming from functional programming and applicable to all the programming languages that uses functions. Today, when I show the code snippets, those will be written in JavaScript, but it doesn't matter. The concept is applicable to many other programming languages. I hope you find this one very useful. And if that is the case, please, please subscribe to this channel so that you get to learn lots from my experience. And also, please like and comment on this video so that I know that uh, what you liked about it. All right, so without any further delay, let's get into learning pure functions and side effects. Before we start talking about pure function, let us spend some time by understanding what are functions. In many programming languages, functions are the first class citizens. It means that you create and modify a function so that it can perform some task. And inside function, basically, you write your programming statements, right? But not only that, in a programming language like JavaScript, you can pass function as an argument to another function. You can return a function from another function. You can assign the function as a value to a variable. So this practically you can do each and everything required with functions, right? So one of the most used thing is like you pass an argument to a function, which is an input. You do some task inside the function. And finally, you return something from the function, which is an output, right? So what you can return from the function, let's write a very simple function, like function test me. It takes an argument, let's say input. And what we do is basically we do something like return and we'll return a string. We'll say testing whatever the input we are just going to print, right? Now, this is my very simple function which takes an input and return an output. Now, if I want to uh, invoke this function, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do test me, pass a value over there. And what is going to do It's going to send me a return value. Let's take this return value in a variable. Say rate val is in a variable. And then next thing that I can do is like, I can check like what is this return value, right? I can do like console.log of rate val, right? So what do you think that uh, return value is going to be? It is going to be testing space and then this particular value one, two, three. Once I save this and see it in the output. As you see, it is testing one, two, three. Now, what if I don't put this return statement at all over here? What do you think is going to be the output value? So is it going to uh, output anything? Yeah, of course it is going to. It is going to output an undefined. Even when you are not returning explicitly, the function will return an undefined. So we get to see undefined right now um, you know, in the console, right? So you see undefined in the console. So we understood like how the returning things happen with the function. As we now understand what function is and how it behaves, I think it's the right time to get into understanding what is a pure function, what is the usage of it, why should we bother about it at all, and what are the side effects and what are side effects impact on a pure function, okay? Let's get to it. As a programmer, you use functions to perform some task and then finally return an output or produce an output. Most of the time you do that by passing an argument and working on that, right, the input. But all the while, you always want your functions should have certain key characteristic. One of the characteristic is it should be predictable. So what does it mean? It produces a predictable output for the same inputs that you provide to it. The second characteristic that you may want is something called readable. So it means anyone reading the function as a standalone unit can understand what exactly the purpose of this particular function. The next thing that you want to make sure that your function should be reusable. It means you can reuse the functionality in multiple places so that you don't have to uh, kind of duplicate the source code or you don't have to alter the source code of the, of, uh, you know, of the caller of the function, right? And the last thing that you want to make sure that your function is testable as a unit, right? So these are the characteristic uh, you have to ensure that when you write a function, it already has. And you know what? A pure function has all these above characteristics. Basically, it is a function 
that produces the same output for the same input. So this one you need to really keep in mind. Produces produces same output for the same input. Now if I tell this a little bit more technically, it means that it always returns the same result when you pass the same arguments. If you change the arguments, the results will be changed, but for the same arguments, always the same result. So it is predictable and you will see certain examples that you are coming up with. It is how it is readable, reusable and the testable as well. Right. So let us first write our first pure function. So our first pure function starts with the keyword function. Let's say the name is say greetings and it takes an argument called name and what it does is basically return a simple string called hello the name right simple function now as a caller when i call this function called say greetings and i pass any string say tapas so as you know as many times i pass the same string tapas it is always going to return me what it is always going to return me hello tapas right there's no change of that now if i change this input for example from tapas i'm changing this input to something called alex what is going to do is like it is going to return me hello Alex whatever the times that I actually input the Alex to this particular function. So this is a pure function it is also readable because we say greetings it can you can always say that it is going to uh, return some kind of greetings and then it is always predictable for same input same output you can always test this function as an isolation because it does only one task that is returning a greeting, greeting message and of course it is reusable in multiple places. Now how can you make this function impure now usually I should teach you like how can you make an impure function pure but I'm teaching you other way so that you know like the kind of coding that we do usually that we write probably mostly impure functions and then you know we can recognize them easily right so let's take this one and let this let's make this function a little bit impure so what if I do something like this is let greeting equals to hello and then instead of having this one hello i just say greeting all right so what i'm doing here before this hello string was local to this particular function so there was nothing that was actually able to change the string from outside now this particular string is at the outside so it means this particular uh, value is is a state value which is outside the control of this say greetings function now there is no guarantee that for the same input it will always return same output how because when this particular function is getting invoked for example say greetings there could be a possibility that a network call or or getting from the api some value or from the cache or local storage this hello would have got changed to hola so for example when i'm making this call this particular uh, variable value was hello so it was hello tapas and then when i'm making the next call somewhere at the down this part this actually going to change it to hola alex and then again when i'm calling this same guy you know uh, once again this probably again get got changed to you know something like hello so you don't have a guarantee that for the same input this is going to produce the same output right so it is not a pure function at all and it is not a pure function at all because there is an impact there is an effect of an outer state variable which is not with local to this function whose value might change this particular effect is called side effect so this is one of the side effect that can make a function as an impure function there are multiple other side effects possible other side effects possible like you make a network call and the value changes because of a response you make a dom manipulation you know with some kind of queries and the, and the manipulation of it you actually do logging uh, to a console or to a file you do io operation basically you do everything that is not intended for a function's output is called a side effect as simple as that right so we see an example of what is a pure function what is an impure function and what is the side effect right now one side effect we have seen here let us take another example a little bit little more complex example where i can tell you two more side effects so the two more side effects that we are going to learn now one is called mutating the inputs and the second one we'll be seeing like dom manipulation manipulation 
okay so these two side effects now what is mutating the inputs means so a function takes an input so let's take a function say a function uh, find reverse what this function does is basically takes two parameters one is an array of users and one item to find in this particular uh, array of users but it has a speciality that is always start finding the item in the array from the last instead of the first that is the objective so for that what you can do basically you can first reverse this user array say users dot reverse a function but wait the users dot reverse function is going to mute it going to change the order of this array so wh what you are doing in this line you are basically mutating the input directly that the first concern for a pure function you are in the verge of making this function as impure okay let us proceed with that now you did that now users is basically muted it and even if you you know take this in a different variable like you know reversed equals to but you have already muted the users incoming variable uh, the actual variable right now what you will do will basically do a uh, find function const say found equals to reversed dot find and here you will be uh, iterating through this particular reverse array and what we'll be doing like you know return the uh, object only when the user is equals to item right so that's your logic so what you're doing in the reverse array you are iterating through you're taking out one user at a time and then you are actually equating with the thing that you are searching for if it is found if it is a match you're returning that so now this found uh, variable has the matched element if at all it is matching otherwise it is undefined now what you are doing instead of returning this found you are probably doing something like this document dot get element uh, by id and then you have a um, you know id some id like user uh, user id and then you do a inner text of this found user so what you are doing you are actually finding the user and then there probably a html element uh, exists somewhere whose uh, id is user id you are actually getting uh, acquiring that element and you are setting the value as a text value this particular user name. that's what you are doing in this now this particular function is a impure function because first of all you are mutating you know your input and then instead of returning you are doing something else now think about this case that someone have an user's array something like say a a b c this is for the sake of this demonstration only i don't like to name like that and then you have find reverse function in that you pass users and you are finding for say b so usually you should be able to see like you know the b user found and it is getting set somewhere uh, but I, as a caller of this function um, you won't know what exactly this function is doing or what is expected out of it until you read the definition of the function your expectation could be like you know it is going to return that uh, found users or return an undefined but what is unfortunately happening is like it is not returning it's setting into html uh, element text so the readability of this is compromised the predictability of it is compromised this function find reverse cannot be tested uh, you know in isolation because it is doing more than it what it is supposed to do it is uh, it is not a pure function now how do we make this as a pure function the two side effects that we spoke about like mutating the input let's solve that first out of those two so what you can do instead of mutating the input itself directly you can actually take a make a clone of it your input and then you mute it so that the state of your input the original variable is retained there is no change so that you know subsequently you don't lose the uh, state of your your input so to clone it you can use the spread operator that will clone this particular users uh, array and on the clone you are now calling the reverse right so now the original users is intact second thing is instead of doing this instead of uh, you know doing a dom manipulation over here now you just return the found from here right and then now it is more predictable right it's always 
return the uh, you know same output for the same input um, and also it's like you can actually catch the return value uh, in a variable like const found user equals to now after that you can do whatever you want you can do this dom manipulation maybe in a separate function altogether so the responsibility of each of these functions also separated out now this particular function is more readable more predictable you can test it as a unit because it does only this particular job doesn't do anything else so you are actually satisfying all this criteria all this possible criteria of a pure function over here so this is this is really really cool thing for uh, you know a programmer to know uh, like how to make a function pure and what can actually cause things as an impure we have mentioned about dom manipulation here and if you are new to understanding dom query and dom manipulation uh, you can subscribe to this channel because i am going to share a lot about dom manipulation in my upcoming series uh, so that you can learn about it so uh, you know this that's all basically about the concept of a pure function and the side effects now one question might come in your mind like can i write uh, a, a application of the program using just the pure function i think technically yes you can always write but that particular function that particular application is not going to do much because your application program will have side effects like http calls logging to console io operations and many more so use pure functions in as many places as you find possible so that at least that part of the code having all these advantages of predictability readability uh, you know uh, testability and all and then you can isolate the impure part the side effects like like a xml http call like a network call like you know uh, io call all these impure side effects you can isolate as much as possible in the separate functions this will improve your program's readability debuggability and testability a lot so i hope you enjoyed learning about uh, pure functions and the side effects embracing functional programming concepts like pure functions reducing side effects will make your code much better to manage and maintain it means you will get lesser bugs quick identification of issues isolating problems and increased readability and testability of your code so please go back i would suggest a book called functional light javascript by kyle simpson the link is there in the description of the video please go ahead and start reading it if you want to kind of take a deep dive into this functional programming concept and want to learn this concept much uh, deeper by the way did you know i have a blog too where i share lots about javascript react and web development please check that out i have written hundreds of articles till date it is blog.greenroots.info all right see you then in my next video please please subscribe please like or comment this video and if you have any questions please reach out to me on my twitter handle you can feel free to dm me the twitter link is right there in the description have a great day take care of your health thank you very much